EAA Chapter 166 in Hartford, Connecticut. It's a Hoban Evans RV 12 build. And you know, gone are the days where this kit has been a bunch of pieces on the hangar floor. As you can see, this thing is really starting to come together as we close out 2024. And I think 2025 is going to be an interesting year because this airplane is going to fly. Well, Larry, uh, since our last video, um, we've made uh, quite a bit of progress. But I think if uh, you know our viewers think back to our last video, we were talking about avionics and some of the plumbing to the engine. Um, what we've been working on since then is we've installed the uh, engine controls. So we've installed the uh, throttle choke and then there's a uh, lever for the uh, radiator heater door. So that's basically cabin heat that provides cabin heat. And uh, for the last few weeks, we've been spending a lot of time working on the cowling, doing the uh, all the trimming that we have to do with the cowling to get it installed along with uh, riveting on hinges so that we can attach it to the airframe. Uh, you can see that we've installed the, uh, the propeller. Um, we've got the spinner fitted. So what I'll do is remove the cowling here and uh, then we'll take a look underneath. So there's a couple of hinge pins that are, are hinges that run along the back side of the cowling here and uh, to remove the cowling you have to remove these hinge pins but, uh, as you can see the uh, the hinge plates here for the upper uh, upper, upper part of the cowling um, they're held together with the hinge pin and uh, it basically joins the lower and upper half of the cowling. The same is true here on the, uh, at the back side of the uh, upper cowling. So you see the hinge plate and the knuckles here um, attached to the airframe. And then the other half is attached to the, uh, the cowling. So we haven't attached the, the uh, hinge plate to the cowling yet. We're still in the process of doing all that work. Um, but so what we've done underneath the cowling here for the engine. You can see the uh, engine controls. So we've uh, installed the th throttle cables. Um, so we have the uh, Rotax 912 has dual carburetors. So we have uh, the uh, dual um, throttle cables and the uh, dual uh, choke cables that have been fed through the firewall and installed. We still have to do some trimming on the, uh, the cable links. Um, so that work has been done. We've also fed the uh, pitot tube up from the firewall and uh, fed it up through the, uh, the gearbox here. And uh, so the pitot tube is attached to the back of the, uh, the gearbox through this plastic plate, mounting plate. And uh, you can see the back end of the uh, pitot tube sticking out through the back there. And uh, it's attached to the rest of the uh, pitot tube with this uh, short piece of plastic tubing that gets wire tied to it. Um, and then it feeds out through the front of the spinner. You can see the pitot tube there. And um, <clears throat> So that work has been essentially completed. Um, once we're done with the cowling, we'll work on uh, installing the spinner itself. So we've attached the, uh, as you can see, for mounting the, uh, the propeller, we had to uh, mount this uh, rear spinner plate to the uh, propeller shaft and flange. Then we have the hub for the, the, on top of that is the hub for the propeller. Then next is the uh, hub clamp, which basically clamps and holds the propeller, the two propeller blades in, together. And then on the forward part of that is this uh, front spinner bulkhead. And uh, so to attach the spinner, what we're going to have to do is mount the spinner temporarily. And uh, the instructions tell you to pull some of the spark plugs, you rotate the propeller and you have some sort of a reference point here that tells you whether or not um, the spinner is causing 
the uh, pitot tube to deflect and what you do is make adjustments on the fit of the spinner until you get very minimal motion here and then you're able to then drill all the holes you need to drill into the rear spinner plate and this forward bulkhead piece uh, to actually attach the spinner to the uh, to the front of the uh, aircraft here so that's some of the work that we have left to do for the lower cowl we still have the uh, this baffling that we have to install that goes in the lower half of the uh, canopy or I mean sorry the lower half of the uh, cowling gets mounted inside like so the uh, oil cooler is here and then the uh, this part wraps around to the back and funnels air to the uh, radiator or the water cooler here um, which is part of the cooling system and behind that is actually a, a little door that's controlled by the lever inside the cabin that allows some of the uh, hot air from the radiator to get into the cabin if you want cabin heat okay so as part of the work to um, install the cowling there's a lot of trimming that you you have to do uh, when you receive the uh, cowling both the lower and upper there's a lot of extra stock that's on the back end here um, so you have to cut these to the scribe lines that are molded into each of the cowling halves and it's a lot of iterative work so initially you can do a lot of the bulk cutting you know with a an abrasive saw and a dremel tool but uh, once you get it close if you want to get a really nice fit like we've gotten here um, you have to do a lot of basically sanding temporarily mount it sand it and uh, keep adjusting the fit until you get the fit just right so it's a lot of iterative work um, on the uh, lower half here you there's also a lot of trimming that you have to do in the opening here that in the front for the oil cooler um, and then there's trimming work done here on this uh, flange piece where the uh, lower and upper cowlings fit together um, same thing is true on the upper cowling so on the back edge there's a and on all the sides there's a lot of extra stock again there's a scribe line that gets molded in you have to do cutting and then a lot of iterative sanding to get it to, to fit just right go you know sand fit sand fit and uh, it, it's just a lot of tedious work but uh, if you uh, take your time and you're um, careful about it you can get a really nice fit you probably notice that we've got a couple of uh, nice big tables workbenches these were actually donated by a uh, EAA member from uh, chapter 27 uh, that individual was working on a, a Zenith 750 and decided to uh, sell his kit so he didn't need the workbench anymore um, this used to be these two two tables used to actually be one it was one 14 foot long table and uh, we he donated it we went down picked it up and uh, we cut it in half and made two nice workbenches out of it so uh, it's really good uh, you know EAA all the various members around the country um, they're great in terms of sharing tools and uh, you know supplies and, and workbenches and uh, we have a lot of very generous members in EAA and uh, they're always willing to help us out when they can. So it's very appreciated.